instead of you coming towards me, I will come towards you. Okay. Yeah, just she has to realize that's okay. Some time. Hi everyone, welcome to a new Begijnung video. My name is Tommy and I'm here together with uh, Magali van der Heide. She is specialized in the behavior of horses. So yeah, when they got spooked or scared, she knows everything, how we can solve it, isn't it? That's absolutely <laughs> true. <laughs> so Magali, for the people who don't know you, um, can you please tell me what exactly are you doing and why did you start doing what you're doing? So what I do is I try to combine horsemanship and sport. And so I'm specialized in behavior and in training, which means that people come to me with uh, all kinds of problems in hand and ridden. So it can be that horses are scared, stressed, uh, trailer load issues, lunge issues, but as well the issues ridden. And I also am specialized in training young horses which means that I train uh, from full to four-year-olds to prepare the horses for their future job and their future life. And then I have a third uh, thing that I do is I coach people. So people that are interested in my job and the groundwork, uh, they can also come to me and then I teach them and then I explain them everything about behavior and training. How did it all start? I guess like everyone, I was just in love with horses as a young girl. And so you start going to the to the manege, to the, to the stable, and you start riding. But I saw so many problems, um, and always the same problems. Horses running away, bucking, people falling off, getting frustrated, getting scared. Um, and when I was young, I was interested in those difficult horses. I liked to ride the difficult <laughs> ones. But when I got older, I tried to find the reason why are those horses so complicated. And so I started looking and I was interested in studying something about behavior. And so I found on the internet, I found a, a school in France. Uh, and so I did some tests and then I could apply and I started the horsemanship or the équitation éthologique okay. uh, in France. And from there on, it started uh, going. Uh, yeah, from our viewers, we get a lot of questions, um, for example, from the last video, I had a question how I uh, had my horses always so calm at shows because it's so a uh, calm environment in here. Uh, so I told them that we, of course, have issues as well. Um, and that I also believe that it's uh, not only like the mental state of the horse, but also from the rider. And that's also what you're doing. Eh? You all so teach yeah. the riders how to deal their emotions and energy. Isn't yeah, in our in our sport, it's really interesting because we are two living beings, and so we can. Some horse, some people say, "Oh, my horse is stressed," but then I can ask, "Yeah, but how how do you feel? Are you stressed? Are you anxious?" And it's normal that as a rider, you are vulnerable, and we don't like to fall off because you get hurt, and because I'm afraid, and I don't want to fall off. It, it hurts. Um, and so it's normal that if something happens, a noise, which is just a really neutral noise, it doesn't mean anything, but a simple noise can suddenly mean my horse might spook and I might fall off and I might do something. And so I have to train both parties and see um, what do the rider do or what do the, the owner do and how does the horse respond and how does the rider respond. And so it's not always easy to see who started first. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a combination of both, of course. Mm -hmm. Do you ever have horses where you don't succeed? So for example, they stayed always like in a kind of spooked way or a tensed way. Um, I, I mean, is, yeah. is, are all horses fixable or fixable? There's maybe yeah. a, like a dramatic <laughs> yeah, kind yeah. of thing, but. I know what you mean. I think um, there's a lot of problems and I think we can solve all the problems. But like human beings, we have horses that are more nervous and the other ones that are just more calm and more tolerant. But I can solve, I, I think I can solve the problem. But then the question is, when the people go back home, mm -hmm. can are they able to do the same as same, what yeah. I did? And so that's why I need to train the horses. But actually, I really need to train the horse people and the owner and the, the riders. But I think we can uh, make every problem less a problem and solve a lot of the problems, but then 
you know, I don't think there's one rider that has no problem. Of it's course, impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. always we always we always have something. So the reason that I invited Magali here is uh, because I believe that we as riders on sports level they really could benefit from groundwork and i think a lot of people these days see it uh, yeah too much as a separate thing and i believe that we might have the benefits from it if we combine the the two things i choose two different horses we have quinton he's a six-year-old stallion he's kind of cool he also has his his things of course and then we have crystal she's more like uh, sensitive sometimes and she can be a little bit spooked um, so I'm very curious uh, yeah, how Magali will handle uh, the two different horses. Let's go. Yeah, so this is Cristal. She's seven years old. She is um, yeah, a little bit temperamental horse. She can, uh, as I figured it, it's, she can be excited from something and then she can can have like a very over exaggerated reaction mm -hmm. um, but once she knows the job then she chills out and thinks oh okay so if she is a little tense how would her reaction be would she would she be the horse that freezes and stops does she turn around does she run forward and just go far away or what well, is her in reaction? fact um, uh, in the period it changed for example she was also a bit scared when someone entered the arena with the poo cleaner and then she stopped and then um, yeah I teach her that if she's scared I just put my hand forward and I, I teach her to keep moving and then she start turning around and then she start run away so actually we had all different yeah. situations but most of the time what she do now is um, that she spooked a little bit and then she want to take off so forward yeah yeah of course you took her now from the stable yeah um, what is your first impression? What is the first thing you do? Mm -hmm. I mean, for example, when you're talking to me, automatically you yeah. are teaching her something. Yeah. So that's interesting. The first thing I look at is her posture. How is she behaving? Is she walking uh, relaxed next to me? Is she walking really like if she's in a hurry? Is her head up or is her head down? So what we can see is while we were talking and while, while I was coming here, she was really relaxed. Her back was relaxed and her head was really underneath the horizontal. So I could tell on the long, on the loose rein, she's comfortable. Then I come in, it's okay. And now you probably saw that her head level changes because she probably heard another horse, which, kept, which takes her attention. And so what I unconsciously already do is when she is doing this, I add a little pressure and I want her to respond to my pressure even when the other horse is taking her attention. Yeah, so you give her an assignment or how do you say yeah. it? I give her a to, signal. Yeah, a signal yeah. to have the attention to you instead yeah. of the yeah. scary thing. So what I always say is I want, to, I want to make it easy. I want to explain it easy. So for example, you have a, a balance huh? and in one uh, part of the balance, there is the training everything that we do, everything that we teach her. And on the other side of the balance is just the world and all the external factors, which is a really big weight. So if you have a young horse, the weight of the environment yeah, is really yeah. heavy uh, yeah. and your training <laughs> is really light. And what we can do is we cannot change the environment. We cannot ask everybody to, to stop moving and stop talking. So what I do is we try to put more and more weight into the balance of the training for example, you are training, your training is good, and then suddenly you say, ah, oh, there's a horse coming. So it puts a weight in the other side. What you should do is try to train and train and train. So suddenly the training becomes more important than the external factors, yeah. which is called overshadowing. Let's make a shadow over the external factors. Yeah. So what we can see, the first thing is, for me, it's already nice to see that she can stand still. And standing still means she's comfortable and she feels safe. Because if she wouldn't feel safe on a long rein, she'd probably be gone right now. Yeah. So safety is the first priority for every horse. Then the way she stands here, she's really relaxed. So let's just try to keep this relaxed level. State of let's mind. keep yeah. yeah, let's keep it, let's keep this. Okay. Well voilà. I so will let you do your thing. And yeah. Then... Okay. So what I usually do is so the standing still part, if a horse doesn't stand still, I'll just 
repeatedly ask him to go backwards and stand still and make it comfortable. See if I can touch her everywhere with my hand, but I'm sure that that's okay. But it could already show me that there are some parts that she doesn't like. And then two things, I want, her, I want to see how she responds to my pressures. So if, for example, she lifts her head, can I, by putting a light pressure downwards, does she lower her head? So I ask something, she responds, I release. Question, I wait, write response, I release. So that's what I want. Second thing that I try to teach them is going backwards on a light pressure. Ah, good. So I ask something, she responds, I release. What we, what you probably do also yeah, when you're writing. Yeah, that's, that's, so it's so far. It sounds uh, still sounds familiar. Yeah. So that's good. <laughs> so whenever she lifts her head because she sees something else, I will ask her again to just lower her head and just be be calm next towards me. If that's okay, let's just see. I brought my stick. How does she act if I touch her body with a stick on the left side? And of course, on the right side, it seems obvious that horses have two sides. It's logic, but I do think we often forget the right side when we do something. When you see her wiggle like now, she likes it. See? Yeah. <laughs> so what I do is I try to scratch her and then you can see that she likes. Oh, good. And if we can give the horse something that they appreciate, she, she will ask, OK, can I stay with you? If it's uncomfortable, she will want to leave. Two horses, what do they do in the field together? Oh, Throwing they each scratch other. each other and they yeah. bite. And then it's like a massage and it's comfortable. Ooh, it's so. so then I let go of my little rope that is attached to my stick. And let's just see if she can stand still. Even if I want to swing the rope over her back. She's a little bit like this, so I ask her, to lower her head. Good. Ooh, it's so. Again, just light and lower her head. Good. So far, perfect. Yeah, I mean, it looked like we do it many times, <laughs> but I can tell you guys, this is really the first time. Okay, see, I just, she said, oh, let's walk. And then as a trainer, you always have to ask yourself, I think it's okay that she walks, but then as a trainer, I ask myself, did I push the gas button and did I ask her to walk? No, I didn't. So it's okay that you walk, but I prefer that you stand still. So I will ask her gently just to step back and be yeah. on the spot. Waiting for your signal yeah. to go forward. Like your greeting on X, you want her yeah. to wait until you ask her to go. Okay. So always really slowly and doing things gradually. Again, on the other side. You have to try to be handy on both sides. Okay, if I see this, I can make, only in five minutes, I can make a little analysis. How is she? She looks calm, she doesn't move, and she accepts my tools, my hand and my stick and the rope. So what I do now is try to walk around in the arena and do a lot of transitions, like riding. Walk, stop, walk, stop, just to see how she reacts to my signals go and stop signals. From there on, we can try and see, do my signals work if you take an umbrella, if I go towards yeah, the plastic, yeah. and then we'll see if it's heavy or if it's light. Okay, okay Cristal, there you go. Okay, so let's <laughs> just walk and ask her to follow the pressure. Yeah. And then I ask her to stop again. Oh. And then she lifts her head because she sees the camera. So just ask her to lower her head. Ah. And why is she tense? Because she, she sees something that wasn't there before. She yeah. knows the arena and then she says, that's strange because there is something that I haven't seen before. And so change for an animal like a horse that, is, that has to see changes, it might be a danger. So I will ask her again, to lower her head and maybe just go towards and let her see where she is. So lower your head. 
and let's go for a look. Ah, oh. And I always let them look and give them the time to really analyze what is going on. Am I still safe? Because I felt safe in the middle, but I'm not sure if I'm safe now. And the same actions, same exercises. Try to scratch to make her feel comfortable. Oh. Good. And that's probably also what could happen if you're riding and then suddenly she sees something that is different and then you can feel she's like she's more occupied with this than with our our aids. Eh? Yeah. So I wait until she has seen it. She calms down. She says, OK, I'm still alive. No danger. Lower her head again. Let her see what's in my basket. And I just I let her look at it, smell it if she wants, touch it if she wants. But then up we just go and we ignore it and we continue. So that's exactly what I meant. Eh? She yeah. first give a real chill impression and then, and then all of a sudden something happens and then she's yeah. on. So what you have is you have horse A and horse B. And then suddenly you say, whoa, where did the horse B come from? Eh? Yeah. So then what you have to do is try to do exactly the same and try to be the same trainer before as after and just tell her that we are doing exactly the same exercises even when something happens, something moves, something spooks. Ah. So try to get the attention back to me by overshadowing and asking her to step back and then putting her head down again. So what you can see when the horses get tense, their whole body posture changes. She goes from relaxed and slow and head low to head high and wanting to go fast. So a horse that is relaxed will always be slow and always have the head low. And a horse that, is, that wants to escape something will go fast, will, won't be able to stand still as easy. And so the, the important part is that even if this happens, I keep on saying her that it's really important to stand still and to be, to be uh, relaxed. Okay. See. Oh. Good. Ah. And just by taking some, some time, see that's another horse and then she spooks, just let her do it and then ask her to back up again and again. And so even it's those reactions that are unpredictable and then so fast. So what you do is try to tell her that it's not ne one, not necessary to do it. It's OK, we are in a safe environment. And two, what can I do? Just try to ignore, stand still and ask her to lower her head again. But especially don't put um, a negative reaction on her fear. And that doesn't that doesn't help. Oh, it's so. But what happens when people ride is we are two beings. I'm used to this, so I just ignore and I'm, and I'm calm. But if this happens riding and you feel vulnerable, or if this happens with somebody who is not as fast as me, then we get stressed and then, then it's, it's becoming yeah. a bigger problem. And we just ignore and we continue our exercise. So what we have to do, what is really a difficult job, is we have to try to be more interesting then everything that is going on, and that's, that's a big pressure on us, eh? trying to be more interesting than other horses, than a plastic bag, than kids running around, than her friends being in the field. Oh, good. Ah. So again, I ignored her reaction, but I try to reward when she is calm. Okay, again, just try to stay in a walk ah. and then ask her to come towards me again without looking at what's happening. Ah. Oh, 
And again, when she's here, try to reward her. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Would you like to see how she reacts when you take, for example, an umbrella? Would you like to start yeah, sure. with that and just yeah. see? Probably she will look and be tense and then just see how what I do to make her relaxed again. So you see something changes, but what you can see is we can, most of the people say horses are animals that are uh, afraid, but I would say they are also very curious. So what you see is she still stands here and then she goes, there's something new there. And maybe you could reward her and say, you know, let's go and have a look. And so see if she is interested by looking at it, smelling it, and then just realizing that it's just a basket. And if she would be really afraid or really young and it would be difficult, I would, for example, put some carrots or some food in my basket. So suddenly they discover that the scary thing is just a food bucket. Yeah. So she's, she's okay with the basket. Yeah. Okay. Good. So again, what you see is her posture, long, low, low and long neck. So that's what I want to see. Ready for the umbrella? Yeah. So let's just see first. Like if it's not open no, yet, not open, no, okay. not open. Now you can see. Okay, what do, what does she do? We can do two things. If you will stop, if you approach her with the umbrella, then we might cause a reaction because she attacked. might go backwards. Yeah. So what I'll prefer to do is instead of you coming towards me, I will come towards you. Okay. Yeah. Which is a big change in the horse's mind. Huh? And again, she can touch it, she can smell it. What is it? Is it okay? Mm. Good. And instead of, for example, if she would be tense, instead of waiting for her to go step back, I want you to step back so you can create curiosity. So if you go backwards and then she will want to follow you. So it's easier to follow than being followed. Okay. Being followed is, is always scary. Yeah. Okay like getting hunted yeah so now she's hunting the umbrella okay. and then that's that's more rewarding see if she wants to go backwards then you go backwards and i follow again just to avoid to create a backwards escape okay so what we will do is now you can just walk around with the umbrella and she's we will try to, to <laughs> yeah see it's already she's really interested yeah and so now you walk away and i will follow you and by following you she, will, she says, ah, he's going away and I, I, want, to, I want to see what okay. it is. Yeah. Okay. So we create curiosity. So you just walk and then you can see, hey, where are you going? And then we'll just follow. Ooh, it's, uh... And then again, I check. Can I still stop whenever I want? Because I, don't, I, I want her to follow you, but Focus I want on... to be able to stop her. Huh? So the umbrella is not the trainer. We stay the trainer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then you ask again just to wait and then she can touch. And then you walk away again, and I wait, I wait we wait, and then we go. Ah, and then we go chase, let's go chase umbrellas. <laughs> Good. Okay. And now you walk away, and when you are away, you can open the umbrella. Let's just see her reaction when you open it. Yeah, but slowly, yeah, I guess. Yeah, and so. away from her. So you, when you walk away, you open it that direction. You open it away from her. That one? Yeah, just like this. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I like it that she wants to come with me. Yeah, that's already a good thing because we, <laughs> good, good. we could have two, di two solutions. I want to follow or I just want to get out of here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you open it, but you open it away from her. Yeah. So suddenly we have a change. The umbrella looks different. So that's the first thing. Whoa, it looks different. Am I curious or do I want to run away? Let's give her some time. Let's just ask her to lower her head. Okay, I asked her something, she responds, and then I just try to follow you and then maybe just walk around the basket and I'll follow you. Yeah. Keep him the umbrella like this? Yeah, you just keep the umbrella like this. It looks good on you, the umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the rainbow, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Come. Ah. Ooh, it's so... And then again, now you go away. So I want you to go away. Ah, before she had enough, you have to go. Yeah. And she says, oh, I, I, I wasn't finished yet. That's good. Let's have a second look. And so you create, make sure that you don't follow me. So yeah, oh, yeah. I, yeah. 
Because that would be a second step. And the first step is I follow you, but once she's okay with the umbrella, I want you to be able to follow me or be next to me or just jumping around, but that's maybe for the next okay. phase. Okay, now you can put it above your head. Just move a little bit. Good. And then move away because she's going backwards and then we follow again. Okay, and then just stand still again. Let her have a look. So you can see the, 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 the issue, like, am I interested? Should I stay? Should I go? And what we want is that just that she understands, okay, there's an umbrella, but that's nothing special. It's nice. It keeps the, the heat away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I ask her to go forward and then it's again the balance. Is my question to go forward more important than the fact that she said, yes, but there is an umbrella. Go forward, but. And we have to try to take away all the buts. <laughs> the but. Ooh, a, now you walk again and then I just follow you. And then you can see that again on her ears and her eyes, that she's curious and that she wants to follow and then she's more looking at something else than your umbrella, which means that the umbrella is already... It's passed. Yeah, it's just <laughs> okay. Ah. Oh. And then you walk again. Okay, now you can stand still and then we just will try and touch the umbrella. <laughs> and what is also nice to see is that if we already prepared this in hand, as a rider, you or anybody else who is a little bit tense, um, if you see how she reacts in hand, you will probably be more relaxed confident, and more comfortable yeah. and confident when we ride. But if I open the umbrella and we didn't prepare it in hand, you will, you will, you will think, okay, but what if no. she does something? <laughs> yeah. So, now we already had this first uh, um, encounter with the, with the umbrella and so probably we'll just see uh, the next time how she reacts when you are on her. Is it the same reaction? Is it different? Why is it different? And so that's, that's what makes it very interesting to see. Okay. Can I close it? Yeah, you can close it. Yeah, but just away from her. Yeah. So never do something towards her. Okay. Good. <laughs> So I have uh, the big umbrella over there, uh, the big uh, flag, the big flag, the big ah, yeah, white flag. Yeah, yeah. And again, I think you can see flags everywhere eh? on every competition. You see yeah. them. You see them when you prefer not to see them. And so when they are there, you can touch. You can just teach your horse how to respond to your demands, even when flags are moving. What you can do now is just come next to me and let's start on the left side. And just try, when you come close to her, to keep the flag in your right hand, like this. Do I do it or you do it? right hand. You do it. Yeah. But I'm an amateur. Eh? That's good. <laughs> yeah. And just put it all together first in your right hand. And then come to... So your, your flag is on the right. Now flag away from her. And you just touch her with your left hand, but ah. the flag is away. Okay. So just go and touch her. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's just like you want to touch her. And if you wear... If you're wearing an umbrella or a flag or your hat or sunglasses, it doesn't matter. What is important is that you are just being yourself, even if you're touching a flag. Okay. Okay. Now touch again with your left hand and then touch her with the flag on the, on the withers. Don't hesitate. Just do it. Yeah. See why you are hesitating? No, I, complete... I, was, I was waiting for yeah. your command. Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I completely understand that we think, should I? But actually, if I just do this, yeah. Ah, it looks normal. Yeah. If I do this, yeah. then I, she's going, uh, yeah. you're what doing something yeah. strange. And then you take it away and again you put it on her. Ah, good. Again, we see a relaxed mare, but I know how tense she can be. And what we see is that she says, I'm okay with you. You're, yeah. You are here and I don't care about what you are having in your hand. Now we are going to do the same thing on the other side. When she says it's okay, you just up without hesitating, touch her and then you do it again. You away again and then you touch her again yeah and i always you have to repeat it because the more the you swing. repeat it the more it's it's you, yeah you become predictable to her yeah the first time maybe she says i'm not sure what you're doing but after five times she says oh it's okay you're yeah. just it's just a flag yeah and now you can release and make it bigger like all the way not all the way you can just make it a little bit bigger yeah let's just do step by step and you do exactly the same thing Okay, 
and again and still lovely she's standing still her head is low her muscles are really relaxed i will let yeah. go then eh? okay you let go and then just go up I, do i keep my hand here yeah you can just try to touch her and then good and then away again and then again try to lift the flag otherwise it's going to fall off yeah good and then away okay and then again and away and then just touch her again. Try to touch her with your hand. Yeah. And then you go away. And what you can see is it touches her and she got a little tense. I like to just 10%. But what we can do is, see, she lifts her head. What I can ask her is lower her head while you and do this. And then go it away. And when then she go relax. away. Walk around with the flag. And then again, she says, hey, that flag. And then let's follow the flag. Let's be curious and let's check out what he's doing. So funny to see how she is paying attention, but yeah. still say, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. She has to be ready to escape if it gets dangerous. Yeah. But you see that she's already wanting to, uh, to follow and that she's interested. Right? Very curious. Good. Oh. For example, if you would say that another horse gets really tense, just start by following the object. Following okay. is always the best solution okay. if a horse is tense. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So even that might be a truck or a yeah. tractor or a cyclist, just go chase the cyclists. Chase cyclist. it. <laughs> just chase them, yeah. <laughs> the last thing is I will ask her to walk over a plastic thing. Okay. Now, the chance that you will see a plastic when you are riding your competition i don't think that it will happen but there are so many horses that yeah, spook but flower pots yeah and, or flowers and, and or just stuff. like or yeah. just um, the shadow on the ground yeah, so many exactly. horses go no yeah. i don't go yeah so the plastic is just a way to teach them you know whenever i ask you to go just don't hesitate yeah, we have done so me. many things at home yeah. just go and then you have a horse that says okay i'll do whatever you ask me, because I'm always safe. Oh. So let's see if she wants to step over a plastic and what her reaction would be if she sees something on the ground. So again, what we can do is play a little bit on the curiosity. So what I want her is to be straight in front of the plastic. And let's see, okay, can I smell it? Can I touch it? Does it move? Is it safe? So let it give her time to explore because it's a good thing that she wants to explore. Ooh, it's so. Uh... Good. <laughs> Ta-da! Ta -da. <laughs> yeah, but I think because if we should have done this right away, yeah. It would have been different, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. So what I always, I call it a little bit of a, like a stress bucket. And what you can see is my first, uh, my first priority was, I want this horse to be as calm as possible. So if I see a little bit of the stress, like we saw with the flag, I call it, there's a little bit of water in the stress bucket. And we try to empty it. How did we empty it? Because we tried to lower her head again. And then she goes, okay, I'm okay. good. Yeah. But it's true that if the stress level is high and the bucket is half full, and then you see a plastic and then you see a flag, the reaction might be more, might be bigger and more stressful. I try to have a plan. What is my plan? My plan is not to make her go over the plastic. My plan is walk from that area to the other area. And okay, there is a plastic bag on the road. And then just see how she reacts. And her reaction was really good because she wanted to investigate the plastic. Okay. She wanted to know, okay, can I have a minute? Can I smell? Can I touch? I'm okay with it. Then I ask something, go forward. And then she says, no problem, yeah. I go forward. Okay. So let's just do it again on yeah. both sides. Stop it. And so it's also always really interested to see, is the horse afraid of a flag or is it afraid because the body is already tense and when you're already tense you become less tolerant and it's the same for us stop it see what you can see is same plastic 
and then she gets annoyed by something and then suddenly her reaction oh, her gets reaction. bigger on the plastic. What we do is just ignore and ask again. Yeah. And so that's important to see that there are different kind of reactions and that what is important is what do we do with it? Uh, just don't punish, don't be, don't be angry, just let her see, ah, okay, I just made a mistake. I, I lost some energy for nothing. Huh? Yeah. Ah. And then can I do the same thing on the other side? And it might be the same plastic, but for some horses, it might be on the other side, it might be completely different. I want to push her shoulder because I don't want her to come into my direction. So what you see is her first idea is, okay, there's a roadblock. Uh, what should I do? I cannot go forward. Let's try to, uh, to go to the right. Mm, no, I would not try to go to the right, try to go forward. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Try again. No, not in my way. Take the other way. And then she has to, yeah, just, she has <laughs> to realize that's okay. She has to realize that it's the same plastic. And what you see is when she's a little bit pushy on the right shoulder, the same plastic might suddenly be different for her. And that's why I always want to repeat and repeat. And not only today, but let me give you some homework and let's try to do this from time to time. Mm -hmm. So again, Ooh, it's so good. And then I ask her to stop. Oh, and then she's okay. So it's really nice to see that the same plastic can cause different reactions. Yeah. And then to analyze, we can see, but what was the difference? Well, when she was trotting over the plastic, you could see that if she was relaxed, it was just plastic and yeah. her posture, long neck, and relaxed and then suddenly when she did this the same plastic was scary yeah. it's like the, the top of the iceberg people say my horse is afraid of the plastic but i go and look for what is underneath yeah. and actually we have to check and see what is going on because plastic is just plastic eh? yeah Good boy. Yeah. Nice horse. Yeah. Oh, well, they both did a good job. Yeah. Huh? They did really well. I think People are nice not going to, see... to believe that we do this for the first time, but it's yeah. true. I really never saw those horses before. <laughs> so uh, it's good. You can see that the horses are relaxed and that they know their environment. So that's already a good first start. If the horse is anxious and doesn't want to be here, then this would be impossible. Huh? So I yeah. just first want them to be relaxed. Yeah, so guys, I think uh, this was very educational. We've seen uh, two very different horses. 
Um, and I think uh, with both horses you could see that if you take your time and uh, you do good horsemanship that you're gonna improve the bond between you and your horse and I think it's very important and also what we need uh, yeah, in our dressage tests uh, the horses need to trust the rider if I sit on a horse and I tell the horse that uh, if he is scared that it's okay that he really believes me so um, yeah in the next video I'm going to sit on a horse and we're going to uh, train together as well and then we're going to find out um, yeah, what we might do differently uh -huh. to approach or it's the same approach by hand. If you don't want to miss anything, then subscribe on our channel. Leave a thumbs up if you like this video. And if you have any questions, then leave them down in the comments. And we see you next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.